Okay, so now we can plot a sine function, um, and uh, and we've organized our program so that we've got uh, these kind of modular units of making the function, making the x points for the function. Um, now we're going to simulate a wave uh, over time, which is a version of a sine function. The wave equation is uh, is this, at least for a one-dimensional wave. So just have an x coordinate. Um, that is a uh, homogeneous wave. Speed of the wave is the same overall space. Um, and our equation here looks complicated. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, a here is the amplitude. Um, K is the wave number. It's one over the wavelength. Uh, F is the frequency. Phi is the phase shift. X is the position. T is time. So there's a lot of inputs, but the equation isn't that difficult. And once we can simulate it, you can see what effect all of these uh, inputs have here, all these parameters for the equation have. So I'm just going to take my sine function sub vi from earlier. And I don't really need this function, so I'm just going to change it to be the, uh, the wave function that we want to be uh, using here. So I'm going to make this more complicated. Um, now, instead of putting in all of these steps as individual uh, mathematical operations here, that can get very messy really fast. I'm going to show you another way to do, to calculate formulas. Um, it's really useful if there's a lot of inputs. Uh, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to keep K, though. Um, I'm going to add all those other inputs. So we've also got F. We've also got um, phi. We've got T. And we're also going to need A. And then what I'm going to do inside this loop is make uh, something called a formula node. So in the structures palette, Go to formula node, drag one of those in there. That's where we can type our mathematical formula, um, which is going to be y equals um, a times sine of 2 pi uh, times um, k times x minus f times t. Um, minus phi. Um, in these formula nodes, you need inputs and outputs. So our output is that y that we're calculating. Wire that up to our y points. Our x we're taking from our x array here. K. Uh, now these input names don't need to be the same as your um, as your control in your program, but whatever you've used inside to write this formula here, that needs to be one of your inputs. Okay, so um, I, it's easier if you make them the same name though. Uh, let's organize our code a little bit here. There's T. And A. And we've made a bunch more uh, input controls here. Um, so we do need, oh, and one other thing. Well, we'll check what our error is in a second. Um, we do need to add all of these uh, new controls we made um, as inputs here to our uh, to our sub vi. So we've already got um, x in. We've already got k. There's f. Uh, there's um, phi. 
let's do uh, let's do T there, let's do A there. So there's a bunch of inputs, but it doesn't matter as long as we have places to put them. And let's see what our error is. So you can see that the um, the error is broken there, and LabView is uh, is pretty handy at kind of helping you find where the error is. Yeah, you can see we're missing right parentheses, so it's pretty much telling us exactly what we need. I forgot, I have two open parentheses, but only one closed parentheses, so let's add that, and then our error is fixed. So um, I'm gonna save that. Okay, and then here in our main program, I'm gonna, I haven't actually saved this yet, so let's save it as simulate wave. I've got all these other inputs that I added that have shown up here. Um, so let's add controls for those. I can just right click on them, create a control, and it'll create a control with the same name as that terminal name. Create control, create control, create control. Oops, made that one a constant. Don't want to do that. Create and I'm going to make these all icons so they take up less room or, or turn off the icon view anyway um, just so that this is a little bit cleaner okay and uh, what does this do? So we've got all of our sine wave parameters here. And I'm just going to plot between 0 and 1. So it's easy to see what's going on. We just get a straight line because our amplitude is currently 0. But if we make our amplitude 1, and, uh, and let's, let's choose really simple values for all our parameters here. Um, if I make your amplitude 1, you can see we do have a sine function. Because we put this 2 pi in here, which we didn't have before, um, now all of our, our periods are in multiples of 1 instead of in multiples of 2 pi. Um, so this corresponds a little bit easier to like a physical interpretation of, what's, of, of what we see. A k of 1 Remember, a uh, wave number is 1 over the wavelength. So a k of 1 means a wavelength of 1. So it should take a distance of 1 to do one period of the sine wave. If I make k2, um, that means the wavelength is 1 half. So uh, 1 divided by 2. So it, it takes, indeed, a distance of 0.5 to do one period of that sine wave. And do 3, we get, we get three, uh, 3 sine waves in here and, and so forth. So this k seems to be working right. Um, the amplitude is how high the sine wave goes, so yep, uh, the auto scale is currently on. I'll turn that off just so that it's easier to see, but I can change the amplitude with the A, a value. Uh, phi is the phase shift, so do we, where does our, where does our sine function start? And a sine function normally starts at, with an amplitude of zero at a, um, x of 0. This actually isn't time right now. We're plotting x and y. Um, but this phi can phase shift this sine function so that it moves um, to the left or right. So you can see as I increase that phi value that the sine function is, is shifted. And if, if you shift a um, a sine function by one quarter of a period, you get a um, cosine function. Uh, well, we've shifted it the other way. I guess we want to do negative phi here. So that would be a cosine function. So um, they're the same thing. They're just phase shifted from each other. So useful input. Now we don't have to make different, you know, formulas for sine and cosine functions. Um, and the other thing is f and t describe the time dependence. So I could plug in some numbers here, I could change time automatically. And so what, what you would expect this wave to do over time is move through space over time, something like this. The speed at which it does so is gonna be related to this frequency here. Um, 
but instead of manually typing in different time values, we want this to kind of simulate the wave moving in, in real time. Um, so I'm going to go back to the block diagram here, and I'm actually going to delete this time input. And I'm going to delete these labels too, because they're kind of taking up room. Um, and I'm going to actually plot this function, or plot this whole thing here in a loop. So I'm going to go to structures, I'm going to go to for loop, and this loop is going to represent um, time. And, uh, you know, actually, I, I don't want this to be a for loop because there's not a specific amount of time I want to run this for. I want to, I want this to keep running until I stop the program. So I don't actually want a for loop for that. I want a different type of loop. I'm going to remove the for loop. I'm going to go to the structures and I'm going to do a while loop. Okay, so it's similar, but instead of running whatever is inside the loop a fixed number of times, um, it runs until this stop condition is met. So you could have it run until, you know, the time is uh, equal to some value or, or whatever, or you can simply wire a constant to this. So uh, I'm going to just, this is a false constant. You can make it true or false. Um, that's what kind of a, a data type this is. So if the condition is false, the loop will continue to run. If it's true, it'll stop. I'm just going to hardwire it to be false all the time so that this will just keep going um, until we just exit out of the program. So it's not the best programming practice to have an infinite loop in your code, but because of the way LabVIEW works, it's pretty easy to, 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 to go out of your program um, manually. Uh, so we're going to have time be related to this I value because this is the same as it was before. Every time this loop runs, this I value increases by one. Um, however, instead of just increasing by one, because that would be one, you know, one whole second, assuming our units are seconds here, I guess they can be anything. Um, we want to be able to change the time increment so that it can increment by milliseconds or, you know, microseconds or whatever we want. Uh, so I'm going to make another control here called um, DT. So DT will be the time step, how much time increases with every cycle. And if I multiply that by I, that will increment this time value by I times DT instead of just I. So gonna make that something really small 0 0.001 um, and then because uh, I don't know this is gonna run as quickly as it calculates so this might be running really really fast so I'm gonna put one of these wait functions in here so that every loop takes you know some constant amount of time let's say 10 milliseconds uh, we'll see we can adjust that if we see we'll see how fast it runs here so if I if I run the program now, seems like 10 milliseconds is pretty good, it seems. Um, time is increasing, and actually, I want to go ahead and create an indicator for time. I'm just going to call that current time, just so we can kind of see how much time has passed. So you can see that's that's increasing, and um, our our. We're simulating this wave kind of propagating through space. Um, and if I want the, the frequency now, what this number is showing us is how many seconds does it take for this sine function to move a whole period? So how much time does it take from when you have, so here at our maxima, how, how long does it take to get a maxima to show up here at time zero uh, again? So if I increase the frequency, then this kind of is moving faster through space. And in fact, the speed of the wave, if you were to measure the distance per time that any point on this wave moved, um, you should know the uh, formula, the speed of propagation of a wave equals um, the uh, wavelength, which is so lambda. Uh, times the frequency. Uh, we have our wavelength defined as a, as a k, so it's 1 over k. 
So this is actually going to be speed equals f divided by k in terms of what we have here. Um, so if we decrease the um, wave number, we should also see the speed increase. So let's try that. There we go. Um, and our wavelength has gotten a lot stretched out too, so we've only seen part of it. I can increase the X range here that we're looking over. Um, there you go. Now you can play with these and you can kind of figure out um, how all these parameters affect a wave as it propagates through space. And in the next uh, video, we will talk about how to simulate multiple uh, waves, multiple pure sine waves like this, and how they superimpose to do interesting things like make standing waves and, and so forth.